So at first, I'd like to uh, welcome everybody to this webinar tonight, uh, today. Uh, my name is Aditi Ramola, and I work um, as a technical project manager at the International Solid Waste Association, which is based in Vienna. Um, and ISWA is hosting this webinar on behalf of the Climate and Clean Air Coalition Municipal Solid Waste Initiative, which is also just known simply as the Waste Initiative. Um, and we welcome you um, today uh, to today's webinar, which is going to be on the data collection tool for urban solid waste management. Um, today's webinar will be led by Ms. Sandra Mazonix, um, who is the Waste Initiative Coordinator. Um, and just before we get started, I'd, I'd like to go over a few items with you so you know how to participate in today's event. Um, so during the webinar, you will learn uh, more about the tool's purpose and methodology. You will also receive information on how to use and access the tool. Um, after Sandra's presentation, there will be time for a question and answer session. Uh, where you will have the opportunity to submit text questions by typing your questions into the dialog box, or you may alternatively um, just um, unmute yourselves and ask uh, questions on your own. Um, the people who type the questions, we will collect these and address them um, at the end of the webinar during the question and answer session. Um, so I would request everybody to please kindly mute their um, microphones for the duration of the presentation. Um, so that we don't receive any feedback while Sandra's speaking. And then um, at the end, we will open the floor up for question and answers. So uh, without further ado, I uh, give the floor to Sandra. Thank you, Didi. Um, hello. Um, good morning, good afternoon, or good night, uh, wherever you guys are located. It's a pleasure for me to be here. Like Didi mentioned, my name is Sandra Masonix, and I'm the coordinator of the Municipal Solid Waste Initiative of the Climate and Clean Air Coalition to Reduce Short-Lived Climate Pollutants. It's, this coalition is also known as CCC. First of all, let me please give thanks to ISWA for organizing this webinar and to the people that have joined the webinar as well. In today's webinar, I'll talk um, about one of the main tools of the Waste Initiative, which is the Data Collection Tool for Urban Waste Management. So um, during the course of this webinar, I'll, the, it will be divided in four main uh, sections. One, I'll talk about the relationship between assessing the solid waste situation of a city, the measurement of the pollutants being generated as a result of the current status of waste management in the city, and the emissions of potential projects to be implemented to mitigate short-lived climate pollutants from the waste sector. Then I'll move on to uh, what are the objectives of the assessment, and then to the methodology of, of the assessment. And lastly, I will um, show you what is the format and how to use the tool. Um, in this last section, I will basically give you a, a detailed examination of what is the city assessment tool. So let's go on to the first part of our uh, webinar, which is assessment, measurement of pollutants and implementation. So in order to do this, um, the major stages of assessing the emissions of the waste sector in a given city, we can divide it into three stages. One would be the diagnostic, which will be basically doing a city assessment of the waste. And then in this, uh, in this stage, then you do basically you gather the general city information. You also take an inventory of the actions that have been taken to improve waste management in the city. You also take a look at the, uh, an overview of the organization of the sector, how it is organized, and then also a definition of the strengths and weaknesses from environmental perspective. So this is all what the, doing a diagnostic of the city can do. Then with that information, then you can quantify what are the short-lived climate pollutants of the, of the city from the waste sector. Then you can start doing a global analysis of the emissions of the pollutants from the sectors using different tools. Then you can, in order to get more information about the, the pollutants, then you can do an analysis by each stage or component of the solid waste management. So you can dive into looking what are the emissions coming from the collection side, what are the emissions coming from the treatment, and also from the disposal. This analysis will then lead you to define a set of priority actions. And then uh, with this, also you can have an indication of the mitigation potential that each action might have. 
Then with those uh, actions, then you can do a, what we call a scenario analysis, which is basically defining possible scenarios using the actions that were um, identified in the prior stage. So you can have a, a scenario with one, two, or three actions or more. And then you can have like the scenarios to be composed of basically a one or one and two actions or one, two, and three actions. So you can kind of see what are the scenarios that would be um, possible to do. Then with this also during the scenario analysis, you can do a comparative analysis of those scenarios. And then that you will use also a emission estimating tool that can has this capability. And then um, with those in, with that information, then you will define an appropriate action plan for the city to take. So basically, you will say, okay, now I have, this is the scenario that will yield the most mitigation of the pollutants, so I'll go ahead and, and, and define an action plan for to follow. So in order to do this uh, stages, um, you will need, it, it's good to use some tools. So the Climate and Clean Air Coalition Waste Initiative has developed several tools in order to help cities do this kind of um, assessment. So the first tool that we have um, to do this for that diagnos diagnostic stage is, to, is two tools, basically. One is the Rapid Assessment Data Collection Tool, and it's a very um, uh, easy tool to use. It basically only has four tabs, and basically the general tab is where you enter the most information. So this rapid assessment tool allows the user to perform a basic analysis of the solid waste sector of their city. And then you have the other one, which is the data collection tool for urban waste management, which is the focus of this webinar. And this, uh, this one does have um, 10 tabs, and both uh, tools are actually available in what we call the knowledge platform of the waste initiative, and I'll show you more information about this later on. Uh, one thing to note that uh, this also this data collection tool also has some information is a tab with um, with information and includes a glossary with some of the terms. But I'll I'll, I'll show you more information about this later. So this is the tools to do the diag diagnostic stage. Then for the for the measurement of the pollutants. Uh, emissions, then you are there. We have a tool which is called the Solid Waste Emission Estimating Tool or SWEET tool. And this tool um, was developed for the Waste Initiative. And basically, it has seven tabs which basically correspond to also to the components of the waste management in a city. And then it has three tabs with the results. Um, this is an example figure from, this, from using the, the, the tool. And basically, you can see here each line represents each component. And then it gives you the results of the um, emissions based on metric tons of CO2 equivalent. And then also to, to do it a comparative scenario analysis, you can also use the SWEET tool. Um, one thing to note, this tool is um, available also in the knowledge platform. And this one, the this tool was developed for the waste initiative because it actually includes the two or main pollutants that the coalition addresses, which is for the waste sector, which is methane and black carbon. There are other tools available in the market that you can use, and but these tools, like I said, they won't include black carbon. Um, they will include like maybe greenhouse gases, which includes methane, but not black carbon. There is, um, if you guys are interested in learning more about this tool, the SWEET tool, there is a webinar um, on, it, on it on the knowledge platform as well. So let's go ahead and move on to um, the objectives of the assessment. This is our, our very broad, so let's just look at them really fast. Um, the main, object, the main objectives are four. One of them is to define the legal and judicial framework of of the city, and so basically, what are the um, what is what does the city have to comply with? So, is there a master plan for waste? What are the permits necessary for uh, siting facilities? What are the national laws, etc.? You know, there are many um, policies that maybe a city has to follow. Also, what mechanisms are available to municipalities? So, 
also city might have um, some mechanisms like um, there's a fees for, for littering or there are fines for not putting uh, your waste out at a certain time. Also, there's there can be a cost recovery uh, mechanism um, that the city has, so it would charge the residents and the commercial sector and the industry several uh, different fines, different fees in order to basically recover some of the costs of treating and disposing the waste. The, another objective is delineating and clarifying the responsibilities of the actors. So knowing who does what, um, what does the private sector do, what does the municipality do, uh, or what does the national government do? And then also in this objective, you want to also see what type of governance is six between uh, the multiple actors in the city. So do you have different kinds of uh, PPPs? Uh, do you have a concession? What are the associations that are in, located in the city? Maybe there's association between the commercial sector where they actually have a way of dealing with their waste. Are there partnerships between uh, the university and the municipality, or maybe the in, in university in an industry? So there's, you want to know more what is out there. Um, also, another uh, objective is to establish the spatial basis of the existing management system. And basically, this has to do with two things. One is defining the action of uh, the area of action. So what are the administrative boundaries of the municipality or if it's the metropolitan area? One thing, uh, some cities are part of a metropolitan area, so and they work, a municipality might work really well by itself, but sometimes it also, as part of a metropolitan area, it, it is kind of uh, impacted by the cities that are near them. So that's important to know what it would be the uh, area of action. And then also it's important to map the existing system. So what is the waste collection circuits that are in the city? What is the location of the solid waste treatment and disposal sites? So where are you composting, where are you recycling? Also, if there's informal uh, recycling activities, where are those located? Um, the last uh, objective then is to mitigate the impact of urbanization and this has to do with knowing uh, what is going on now and what, and what the future will bring. So basically mapping the generation areas, the existing ones, and then the future. So it might be that in the, in the city is growing or it has some cities, some parts of the cities are informal. So maybe the city is thinking of formalizing them. So maybe those will be part of the city. It won't bring in more waste. As well, uh, what types of waste are being generated in the city. So also that has to do with, you know, that if we new, um, new technologies bring new ways, so you need to kind of make sure that you're kind of prepared to know what, what the future will hold and have in plan for that. So it basically, in general, it is necessary to define the influential factors of the waste sector in the city. So let's go ahead and move on to the third part of our webinar and talk about the methodology used uh, to, to do an, uh, the assessment. So basically the assessment is kind of takes you into four stages. Uh, it will take you from the national regulatory framework into doing an analysis by solid waste management component. And um, so in the, the assessment will ask you uh, for the first part of the national framework, in what framework can climate mitigation measures be integrated? Who is responsible? Are there any pre-existing national programs? Are there like any other international um, organizations that are helping with this? So this has to do from the national uh, level. And then the, the assessment goes, goes in and dives into what is the general data of the city. And this is like to take into account like some of the measures challenges that I mentioned, like challenges with urbanization, uh, doing an analysis of pollution, and who would be the beneficiaries of the mitigation measures. Then the assessment will go into doing a global analysis of the waste sector, identifying the main uh, issues of the sector, prioritizing the challenges, and optimizing the system. And lastly, doing an analysis of the solid waste management um, 
sector by component where you can do um, see the baseline of each component and then so that will help you to control the emissions of each component. So here we have basically kind of like the overall picture of what the, what how the assessment kind of helps cities. So uh, for the spatial and demographic data will give you uh, information to deal with the spatial, how to deal with uh, the generation side. The organization scheme will help you do a diag diag diagnosis of the actors and what are the roles, the skills, and the organizations. The analysis by component will give you a, a technical analysis of the waste stream. And analysis of the action and capabilities will give you an, an economic analysis of the waste stream. So you put all that information, and then with that, you can all do an environmental analysis of the sector. So let's go ahead and move on to what is the format and how to use the city assessment tool. So the tool basically is comprised into three main groups. One is the general and rapid tab, um, which we also call the rapid assessment. And then there's a menu of specialized tabs, which cover major activities in the solid waste sector, such as collection, recycling, and diversion. And then there's the assessment and decision support tabs, which comprise the output-based um, aid and results-based financing assessment tool. And this is this was uh, added to the tool because the tool was developed um, with help from the World Bank. So they think that it would be really good for cities to start learning how to use this information in order to create projects that could basically be funded by uh, output-based aid or result-based financing. Then there's also the Projects Developers Notes tab in the tab and photo tabs. There are two extra tabs uh, in the tool. One is the Introduction and the About tab. So I'll show you now basically a picture of what the Introduction tab looks like. Um, and basically you can see the tabs down here. So the general tab that is down here uh, is it allows the user to identify and provide essential data for the city's solid waste sector. Um, the categories under this tab um, include the geographical information, management and regulatory framework, and a summary of the city's facilities. This tab also is used for, um, is basically the main part of the rapid assessment tool. And um, and then for so cities can use that rapid assessment tool to kind of get an overall picture of the tool. But for users that want to conduct a thorough study of the entire city waste management value chain, then the other um, tabs are recommended. So you here you have the other tabs per uh, solid waste management component. So these um, tabs follow the value chain, which is waste collection, recycling, transportation, landfill, which could be open or closed, composting, and waste to energy. Um, it's important to note that because each city is different, uh, it, might be di it might be necessary for the cities to duplicate or delete some of these tabs to better understand their solid waste situation in their city. Um, for example, if a city has two landfills, then the, uh, the city would duplicate this tab. And this is one of the main um, assets of this tool in that because it's in an Excel spreadsheet, then it's very easy to kind of customize and add tabs and add um, um, also add uh, uh, rows to kind of add more information. Lastly, the introduction tab, which is the one shown here, presents the objective of the tool, the intent of the users, and basic instructions for the users. And then the About tab provides information about the tool developer and a glossary of some of the terms used throughout the tool. So sometimes if you if the user has an issue with a term, they can go up to About tab and find more information there. So let's go ahead and, and start diving in to the tool. Um, and basically, in this section, I'll show you um, sections of the of the tool of the of the tab, and then also of of each tab. 
So up here, you can follow with me in which tab I'm talking about. So I'll start talking about the general tab, which is the, the longest tab, which is the one that um, needs more information. Two main things about this, um, what I'm going through to keep in mind is that things highlighting what is basically what we're requiring, asking for information, and then on the gray is what the user will fill out the information. And then it's very important for documentation purposes to provide the information source, like where uh, did the person that's filling out the, the tool came up with the, with, with the information. So the first part of the, with the general, general tab is the user in, in general information uh, section, which basically in this top part is you will fill out the data of the person responsible for filling out the tool. So for example, someone was assigned uh, in maybe in a city or consulting firm, whatever, um, to fill out the tool. So they would actually fill out their name, their title, the contact information. And this is important because if someone is looking at the tool, they want to know who was the one responsible for it. So if they want to contact them and ask them to clarify some questions, then they would have that information available. Then over here, then it will start with the information about the city, the country, what is the national currency, when was the data collected. So maybe if you want to have multiple versions of the data, then you can you know, basically have this information here, when was this actual information gathered. Then some contact information about the relevant city solid waste management contacts. And then here we start talking about the demographic data. So what is the population living within the administrative boundary of the city? Uh, if there's a daytime population, and this is optional, it doesn't have to be filled out, but it's important because in some cities, uh, there is a population that commute, commutes in and out. So you will kind of want to know what 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 is the number of that and how that impacts solid waste management. Also, when was the population that got collected? Um, and then you can provide also the source, whether there was a census that was done in the city, how old is the census, what is the projected population, and what is the projection year? So you can say uh, projection projected population 5 million, and then the projected year will be 2020. So very easy just to add that information. Then we move on to what is basically a summary of the facilities located in the in the city. Uh, and then basically this is similar to the tabs. Um, you can add here, if there's other facilities that are not listed, then you can actually just add a column to kind of reflect that. Uh, you can just leave it as other facilities just specified here, or you can just add more tabs. And then you can hear, we're just asking the information about the number of facilities that are actually owned by the municipality, uh, or if, they, if there's facilities that are owned by private firms and not located within the city, or, and also if there's facilities outside the city, but they're actually um, uh, outside the city by receiving city waste. So this is very common. One example is in Rio de Janeiro, where the actual landfill is located in another city. So it will be, this will be active landfill, will be one. And actually it wouldn't be owned by the municipality uh, in, in not, not even this one, because it's a private landfill that is located outside the city. So then the sec next section is basic has to do with the institution, institutional framework of the city. And then, so, it, this asks a little bit about all the um, how how the city is framed within um, laws, and so does the national government have an agency mandated to enforce solid waste laws and regulations? And here, in some of these um, questions, you will see a select from list. In this case, I just show you the answers, the potential answer that you can answer. You can say yes or no, and then if you say no, if you want to kind of explain how is it work, how is how it actually works in the city. So the national government maybe does not have an agency that is mandated to enforce the solid laws and regulations, but there's something similar. Maybe there's this, uh, 
the environmental ministry does some other work. So, you know, or maybe it's divided between different agencies. So you can explain this here. Uh, also, does the city have a, a department dedicated to solid waste management? Yes or no? And if no, then you can ask some comments. No, there's not one formally. There's a person that does it, and that person is part of this department. And also, does the city have a unit enforcing the solid waste issues in the city, such as illegal dumping? Similar um, scenario. And does the city have its own solid waste management rules? One thing to note, um, some of these questions uh, will come up again. So it will be, is important to be consistent. You know, you don't want to answer no here and then in another, when the question comes up again, kind of answer yes, this is the rule. It will be, it's good to kind of keep that in mind. So when you're answering a question, then it comes, okay, okay well, what was it that I answered before? And also, what is a list of international partners and NGOs currently working with the city and briefly describe each project? Okay, so moving on to the next section. This has to do with governance and actually with communication. So basically providing information on how the municipality uh, communicates with the public. What are the, so this one asks about the channels. This one is um, what kind of key messages are provided to the public. Um, how does the city get information back? How does it collect feedback? So this is this question. And also, um, and also provide a summary of the, solid, of the key solid waste information made periodically available to the public. So does the city provide annual budget? What is the waste collection rate? What is the recycling rate? So this, you will fill all this out. And if it would be great to provide um, also uh, links if they're available so you have that information all documented. So this has to do basically um, doing what is the information for possible uh, stakeholder consultation. So the next section has to do with the legislative and policy framework of the city and there so is there a national governing solid waste management in the country so this is more at the national level um, if you answer yes or no, uh, it will also be, be good like if there's uh, other laws maybe that include solid waste management. Um, sometimes that's the case. Uh, an example like is in Colombia, uh, the if Ministry of Environment deals with uh, solid waste, but uh, for example, siting of, of waste facilities especially landfills, it's actually done by another ministry, so it would be good to include that information here. Um, and then, is the city mandated to collect, transfer, and dispose of municipal solid waste? So is the city actually mandated to do the waste management, yes or no? And this is important because um, even though, in general, cities are mandated, it's there are some cases that are not, um, and this is mostly, we have seen this mostly in islands or small countries where um, basically it's the national government that is the one that is that's doing the, the waste management. So you actually would say this, this no, um, it's actually the, the national government or maybe it's the regional government that is doing this task or that has been mandated. Uh, does the city have solid waste management rules and regulations similar to the question before? And you would answer yes or no. And if you can specify, then that would be great. Does the city have a solid waste master plan? And so this is also a very important question because over here then we have more questions re um, related to that. When was the master plan refreshed or evaluated? When was the current master plan prepared? What year was that? And how long was the master plan for? So it, does it include, is it for five years, for 10 years? And also an additional legislative and policy framework. So um, that is that section. The next section has to do with um, the relationships between the assist between in the, in the city and contracts. So um, are there any legal, legal texts relevant to um, private sector participation and public-private partnerships in the municipal solid waste sector. Um, does the city have contracts with 
private firm for waste management. And then you can, this starts asking, does the contract cover waste collection? Does the contract cover uh, the transportation, the disposal? Because like in some cities, the, it might be the, that uh, the city has contracted the different components. So that's what basically this is trying to get to. And type of um, PPP arrangement. Also, if it's, um, if it's a performance-based contract, and here is basically defined what is a performance-based contract. Basically, it's contracts that have clauses, time, pay payment to performance. And this is very common, um, mostly in waste collection contracts, where the city will pay to um, to to when there's satisfaction that the that the cleaning was done correctly, or you know, if there's if there's um, errors or if there's something that they didn't do, then the, um, the city can say, no, we're not paying you because, or they can withhold the payment until uh, the, the private sector or the private company actually fixes it. The duration of the contract and the value of the contract in local currency. And then you will put here, so you put here the, the amount and you put uh, in also in, in, in the currency that is the contract. Then this, the next section, it has to do more now with the solid waste data. And then this one, it has to do, so we start with what is the quantity of waste generated, the average, average waste generated per capita at the city level, and the average waste generated per capita at the national of national level, if known. One thing that um, that is a good practice is sometimes like uh, is to kind of if you don't have a number, then you can kind of say okay this is what we have, or especially in that with quantity of waste generated annually. If if you calculate it based out of the of this other number that you do have, then you you can put your assumptions here. Say okay this number came from here. Uh, what was the year of the above data? Okay, and then this one is how was this data collected? And then you ask, okay, you will say whether well, it was from the tonnages, from the scale house, from maybe from the landfill, if all goes to the landfill, uh, or from the different components, uh, the calculation based on annual generation of population or other. And then if it's other, it it's good to kind of uh, explain here where in this little, in this box. Then here we talk about the composition of the solid waste generated by total percent of total weight. And then it has the different categories. Here as well, if maybe if the waste characterization that was done uh, does not fit, um, I've seen many waste characterizations with um, some material is, is accounted for. So you can either put it as others or you can actually add extra rows so you can actually reflect those extra categories that are not reflected here. And here in the uh, in this box, it would be great if it's specified um, the date of the correct, when the characterization was made, the author, the purpose of the study in place. And in place refers to whether if it was done at the landfill, if you will, if the city decided to do a waste characterization when of the waste incoming into a landfill, or in some cases, some cities do um, curb curbside um, waste characterization, meaning that they will go and collect waste from different areas after the waste was put on the curb, so they can kind of see what actually what the people are putting out, and hopefully maybe get some information about the waste before it is um, maybe. Um, diverted by informal sector. And then another, the continuation of the solid waste data, um, moisture content of the waste, calorific value, um, year of the collection of the above data. Um, this has to do with um, how much each, uh, the quantity that goes into each component, and then also providing a list of studies related to solid waste management. So it would be good to provide the name of the organization that undertook the study, the year, and a brief summary of the findings. And, and if you need more space, then you know can just make the 
the column bigger or the, or the row bigger. This uh, section has to do with one of them is the voice, the management of special waste, how it, how it is managed, where does construction that we go to, what is the what is the management of medical waste, and also e-waste. Here, uh, because this tab has to do with uh, the general and is used for rapid assessment, then if you want to do a rapid assessment of the pollutants, then you would uh, include basic information here, which is basically what is the annual average temperature of the city or the region, relative humidity. If there's a landfill, what is the landfill gas collection efficiency? What is the percentage of that? Um, what percentage of the landfill gas is combusted in flares? And if there's, uh, if there's landfill gas utilization, what is the estimated percentage of that gas that, that is used for that? And then um, part of the, this um, tab includes information about the solid waste fleet. And like I said, you can add more rows. And basically, this, um, this is very uh, it's simple to use. It basically, you, and if available, if the information is available, it's make model of the year of your, maybe of, of your trucks. How many vehicles do you have of that make? What is the type of fuel used, the type of engine? Uh, what is the fuel consumption rate? Average travel distance per truck and per week? and percentage of time idling versus operating in full capacity. Then if there's other uh, equipment that the, the city uses, then like loaders, compactors, et cetera, then you will list that information here, like what is the type of equipment, how many of that equipment do you have, have the type of fuel use, type of engine, fuel consumption rate, average usage, percentage of time versus idling versus operating. And, Please don't be discouraged. Uh, this seems like there's a lot of information, but it's a good practice to kind of start thinking about the, what is your waste fleet and what other type of equipment you use. So if you don't have that information now, it will be kind of important to start gathering in the future. Um, then also uh, the last tab, is, I mean, the last section of this tab is the financial information uh, of the city and for, to be include the most recent one. So what is the municipal uh, budget? What is the budget uh, allocated to solid waste sector? Uh, how much of that is allocated to collection transportation? If there's a, a how much is collecting of the fee that is um, co being collected, what is actually, what is the, uh, how much of that is being collected? If there's an annual revenue from an eco tax, uh, if there's an annual revenue for carbon credits or any other international climate fund, uh, if then and then also if there's any revenue from um, from doing other types of activities, from recycling, composting, AD, and also maybe landfill operations, which this could include uh, the sale of landfill gas. And then the last one will be right waste to energy. And here is the other municipal revenues um, that you can add. Maybe if you if the city collects fines for um, for um, for putting waste at the wrong time, or then you would add that information here. And then, um, oh, so actually here you have that uh, information. You, if is uh, there are other financial resources for the city to use for the solid waste sector from the national government, inter, um, international partners, like so you would add all that information here. So basically, that is the general tab, which is, gives you kind of the general diagnosis of the city. So let's go ahead and move on to the specialized tabs. Um, and then um, and then we should be, this, the, the other tabs are shorter. The general tab was the longest one. So basically, the first specialized tab is on waste collection. And this one actually talks a lot about like what is the efficiency of collection, um, what is the fees that are collected for from the community, like from households, from businesses, like and what is the collection rate, like how much you're actually um, getting from them, and what is the main method used uh, to collect um, 
the fees. So if it's door to door, through utility billing or through property taxes or other. So one that we haven't um, we haven't said. And then also here I um, forgot to mention if there's um, in existence of a source segregated collection system. So are they in the community um, are required to separate recyclable materials or maybe organic waste or hazardous? And if per, uh, there's one another category that is not here, then you would add a column, I mean, a, a row saying, okay, maybe uh, the city is um, required to separate uh, construction and debris. So you would add it here. And then um, also here, what is the private sector participation in waste collection? So if the city is divided by district, then you would put, okay, this district, uh, district A is here with the population of so much. This is how much they uh, collect. Um, what is the type of housing typology, which means can be um, the main one could be, is it a high rise? Low rise is a mix, so what kind of houses are in that district? What collection method do you use? Or, I mean, or does the, or the private sector uses? So it could be manual, semi automated, fully automated. Um, what is the nature and service structure of the service? Uh, and you cannot hear whether it is, it, um, it is curbside, it is through the alleys, or maybe it's a communal container where people put all their waste. So this, or you add that information. What is the destination of the waste from that district? Um, what is the average distance to the main site? Um, whether it's the landfill or if it's a transfer station. Who's the service provider, whether it's the municipality or whether it's the private sector? If the, the private sector, what is the duration of that contract? What is the method used to collect the fee? So this is similar to the question we saw before, or maybe in this district you collect differently, so you would add this information here. And then the structure of the fee, whether um, if it's a private sector, they have to pay per term, or if there's a lump sum, um, et cetera. Um, so this is basically kind of gives you um, an idea of the different areas from the city, how, how the waste collection is being done there. Um, then this uh, tab, and we move to the tab of recycling, and, and this, the tab includes formal and informal recycling. So the first part actually does talk about formal recycling done uh, in the city. Um, so what are the recyclable quantities? Uh, are there use, um, what happens to the to the um, to the items that are formally salvaged and sold, or are they given to the public? What is the what is the uh, is what type of materials are being collected as part of the formal recycling, and then the quantities of um, being collected. And I said you can add categories here if some of these are not included. Like example um, is in Amman where one of the materials that they were collecting was bread. So I would add here, um, material collected as part of the formal recycling, bread, yes. And then here, if I have that number, then I would add it here as well. Um, and then also from the MRF, like where the, um, the recyclables uh, get, um, the area where you're actually uh, gathering all these recyclables, that is part of the formal sector. Uh, and one thing that I wanted to um, note here is this, you see this um, cells have been kind of a little bit grayed out. It's because this information will be required for um, the other types of, 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 of facilities. For So we also see where we ask also facility name of a transfer station, of a landfill, for composting and the waste to energy. So I'll go ahead and address this now, but in the, in the next slides, I won't talk too much about this. So basically, we want to know the facility name, where it's located, uh, and this also could be the address, if, it, if, if there's an address to the uh, facility. Um, who is the owner? So it could be the city. What year was it open? Um, so this is the name of the author, of the owner. So it could be, if it's private, then you will say um, 
Carlos um, MRF. And then here in the category of ownership, you will say whether it's the municipality owns it, is it private, maybe it's a regional uh, a facility or other. And then in other, you, it would be good to kind of specify what is the, what is the uh, category ownership. The same thing with the name of the facility operator. So if it's different or if it's the same, then you add in the category of the operator. Likewise, you would also say, if, it's, uh, if there's a contract to operate the landfill, then you kind of say whether well, it's a concession, design, build, operate, build, operate, and transfer. And if there's other that doesn't fit here, then you would specify it here. What is the length of the contract for operating? What was the capital cost of at construction of the facility? What are the monthly payment of capital costs? And what is the design capacity of the facility per tons per day? Then um, the more um, information specialized to this recycling, to this MRF is, okay, what is the current quantity of waste process? Uh, how is the waste quantified at the facility? And whether the facility has a, a scale house. And this is a continuation. What is the average annual on and budget? What is the tipping fee? Um, percentage of haulers that are paying the fee, um, maybe the arrangement is that the um, municipal haulers don't pay, but the private pay. So you would ask, okay, 50 50. Uh, average waste recover, more or less, what outcomes, what comes in the facility. So, what is the, the composition of that? And then, what is the destination of the waste collected at the facility? Where does it go after that? Does it go to landfill, to Western Energy, to recycling? And then you would add like the amounts that that go to each component. Then we have a, a section just to, for informal recyclers. Um, and this has to do a lot with the amount of people uh, or the quantity of people that work in this, uh, in this sector. So if there's pickers at the dump, if there's street waste pickers, number of female, uh, number of children, what are the waste pickers associations if they or organizations, I mean, um, do the waste pickers have legal access to the landfills? And in, and in some cases, um, the pickers are required to use health and safety equipment. So you would ask this, you would answer here yes or no. And then um, what are the prices that are paid to, to the waste pickers for, for plastic, for paper, for metal, for glass? And if one of other categories, you would add the, the rows. And, but if you have that information, I, I realize this is really hard to obtain sometimes, but there are some cities that actually do have um, some knowledge of this information. Then um, moving on to the transfer station, uh, we have the same thing, the general information one, the ones, uh, the cells that I already said that, you know, they repeat themselves, which have to do with the ownership and operation of the facility. Um, also, um, then over here, we have um, the same things that similar to the MRF, um, which is basically how is that waste quantified at the facility? Does it have a scale house? What is the OMM budget? Uh, operations and, man and maintenance budget, I'm sorry, and what is the nominal tipping fee? Um, also, in the transfer station, um, we also ask um, what is the destination of the waste collected? So the same thing, they would add it here. And here also we ask what is the distance to the final disposal site? So you, whether you put here, um, they will go, this amount goes to the landfill, and then, but that, that facility is located at so-and-so. And actually here, you can actually add column, I mean rows, if there's several dumps or different landfills that it goes to. Because it might be in the case that uh, if, if you collect C and D, then it will, part of it will go to a regular landfill, and then the rest of the waste will go to a C and D landfill. What is the average capacity of incoming vehicles? What is the average capacity of trucks used to transfer the waste to the 
final disposal sites with what's incoming, what's outgoing. Does the facility have a waste compactor? Yes or no. A number of trips, um, conditions of the access road, and what is the, how is the waste quantified at the facility? So this is more about the operations of the, of the transfer station. Now moving on to the landfill dump, whether it's open or closed. And in this one, I uh, um, just wanted to remind you that there's uh, the tool only shows one tab for this, but if there's multiple landfills or basically, or they're combinations of different disposal uh, areas. For example, you have one landfill, one open dump and one closed dump, then you will actually duplicate the tabs to kind of reflect those three disposal um, sites. So one for landfill, one for the open dump, and one for the closed dump. In the beginning, um, we also ask for the ownership and operation of the sites. Also here, very important with, to list whether that site is open or closed. When did that uh, site open? Whether it has a bottom liner, and if it was closed, when the, was the facility closed? Uh, similar information about uh, capital cost and repayment of the capital cost down here. Over here, information about who operates the site. Now we get into more um, the design of the site in operations, like what is the design of capacity of the current cell uh, that is basically uh, operating, uh, the volume of waste in place, tonnage, of waste in place, and this is, we ask this because some cities only know the volume, you know, some cities only know the tonnage, and in some cities, they have both. They, they can tell you, okay, this is the volume, and when converted, uh, this is the tonnage, and, like, and vice versa. Uh, how much area is remaining to dispose of waste, and what is the quantity received? Um, how is the waste quantified? the actual annual operations and manual maintenance budget and the tipping fee. Um, also, very important to add information whether how is the operational cost of the landfill being um, financed. So whether it comes from the general budget, there's international partners that are helping, is the cost is recovered from the solid waste fees that are charged to the residents, uh, there's subsidies from national government, or whether there's carbon financing, or there's other sources. So this is the sources of funding. Um, also, general information about the site, uh, what type of waste are being disposed? Has the landfill contracted its carbon credits? Um, whether there has been a environmental impact assessment, an environmental management plan for the site? When was the last date of the environmental control? The last date of the, uh, when was it published? And please summarize any environmental uh, concerns. Here we have more information about um, requiring uh, the operation, how much uh, percentage of the city is served by the, by the landfill or the dump, if you have that information. Uh, how often is the cover applied to the open waste, whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, rarely or never? Um, what is the approximate surface area of the working phase, and um, whether there's other activities that are actually going on within the facility. So there's removal of the recyclable material when it comes in. Um, there's a waste to energy plant. You know, some, some waste is being diverted there, but it's within the landfill. There's the landfill, there's landfill gas to energy, and oh, there's composting. So basically, valorizing the waste that comes into the landfill. Um, then also um, here is where we ask more information about um, the methane and the black carbon emissions. So whether there's evidence of fires in the landfill and what color is the, uh, the, the smoke of the fire. Then if the landfill has a landfill gas system and flare, so what are the aspects of it? Uh, uh, is the gas vented passively to the atmosphere? Um, is there an actual collection system? Is this system mandated by local law? Um, whether how many are horizontal gas extractions are vertical? 
what is the collection rate of the landfill gas, uh, the methane. Uh, so this is all this information you would most landf most cities would have available to them if they have a um, landfill gas control and collection system. And also if also this information about the types of project that they might have. There might be there might be an open flare and enclosed flare whether it is planned in construction, operation, or, or shutdown. And also there's over here information about the use of the landfill, so whether it's the electricity generation or whether the landfill gas is being used for a boiler, heater, or maybe to um, pipeline injection. And then you would here you would specify the units that are of those uses. And uh, lastly, for the landfill, it would be really good to provide a historical um, annual waste rates. So you would say, okay, uh, you can start when the year started, when the landfill started. So maybe 1999, uh, it was open, the waste has subsected, and then how, what is the units of it, and what is the source of that information. In some cases, um, maybe the scale house was not installed before that. So basically, um, some cities just put uh, the information before that there was this amount of waste because that's an estimate that they had. And then when the scale house was installed, then they actually would have the information about the actual tonnage of, of waste. So that takes care of the landfill um, dump tab, and then we move on to the composting one, which has to do with also with the general information with about the ownership and operation of the of the composting facility, um, as also what is the current waste quantity of waste process, uh, also the tipping fee, uh, if, the sell, if the compost is um, sell, sold for how much, how much uh, quantity is produced uh, of compost is produced per year, and um, how much of it is actually um, the percentage is actually effectively sold. So you might produce so much, but at the end you only sell 80%. So you would add, put that number there. Uh, also, more information about um, the composting facility, sources of funding, um, what is the origin of the feedstock, so where is it coming from? Is it coming from source-separated organic waste, or is it maybe just mixed waste that is um, separated on site? What is the compost blend of the, of the, what is the blend ratio of the compost? So you will see, okay, this is how much is coming in. What are the, the customers of the compost? Um, also, how much of it of the waste that is received actually because of the conditions of it, it actually has to be sent to the landfill. So you add this information there. Um, whether you have information about whether there's odors that, that are noticeable uh, within 50 meters of the facility. Um, also, this, inf this, is, this information is very important, whether the government subsidizes fertilizers, because we've seen that this has a really big impact on the compost um, market. So whether the subsidize or not, I mean, the fertilizer, so fertilizers competing with compost. Uh, if there's any subsidies programs um, for the compost, and if there's uh, agricultural centers that could use the compost, how far are they from the city center? And also describe any primary agricultural products that are produced within the city. Uh, then we move on to waste to energy. Um, here, likewise, ownership and operation of the plant. Um, and then here we have, um, you would list what kind of technologies used, whether specification, incineration, paralysis, anaerobic digestion, and fermentation, in the year it, it, it opened. Please note that if you have several uh, sites as well, for example, you have a waste to energy which we call anaerobic digestion waste to energy. You can put one tap for anaerobic digestion and then one another tap for maybe for uh, an incineration plant. Then moving on, uh, do we have more information, uh, general information about the, the facility, which is the design capacity, 
Um, so this is very similar to, to the other tabs where we ask the nominal fee, um, sources of funding, um, also what is the waste reduction efficiency of the plant, how much from the waste that it gets, how much actually it uh, consumes, uh, whether there's an, the facilities equipped with an air pollution control retrofit, uh, also the, the removal efficiency of that retrofit system, what kind of energy is produced, so we have here quantity and value of the energy. So it's important that if, for example, if you have a type of um, waste to energy that does not require, uh, then you would you would say no, and you can say not applicable because it's it's not applicable to that technology. Then moving on to um, to uh, using some of the information from the S waste to energy, then you this is the data you would need to do a baseline assessment of the methane and black carbon pollutants. So whether what are the emissions of the waste to energy? What are the emissions, the concentration of carbon dioxide, whether vapor carbon monoxide, hydrogen chloride, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxides, dioxin, water vapor. Actually this is repeated, can delete that, and other hazardous air pollutants. So and then the unit that it, we ask is parts per million per volume. And then um, for the project steps, um, this is um, basically if the city is considering um, a, a project that would reduce short-lived climate pollutants and improve um, um, solid waste management. So are there any projects that are being considered, studied, or structured? So you would add that information here. So what are the type of project that is being proposed? What is the objective? Um, what is the estimated cost? How, what are the proposed sources of finances? What the, the private sector would be included? Uh, what would be the impact of waste diversion? So here you would fill out as much information as possible. So that would be good because when you're sharing this information, Maybe with a project developer, it would be good for them to have that information. It, and it's a good thing to have to document uh, the information. Then um, as part of the, oh, the project step, you have the, um, what is called the, the information that would be necessary for projects that exploring results-based financing or outputs-based aid, which um, is basically is projects that most of the time are funded by the World Bank. So what the information required here is the number of beneficiaries and the, what is the output linkage between output and payment, verification arrangement, and other information. For more information about the OBA and RBF, then you can go ahead and uh, go to the Global Partnership on Output-Based Aid, and here's the link, and then for results-based financing, you can go to the World Bank to find more information about that type of projects. Um, then we also have the tab for maps, uh, and basically this is where you can actually show um, the distribution of actors, like what are the maybe the different uh, districts in the city, uh, the, where the facility is located, what are the waste streams? Maybe you have an area which is all commercial, and maybe you have an area where it's uh, um, maybe f um, food markets, stuff like that. So if you have those maps, it will be really good to, to have them to, and to kind of put them here. Um, then it's, it, it provides, this is, uh, the assessment provides an opportunity to reconcile a diverse map uh, that might be used by different municipal entities. And so maybe, you know, the census map, the census office uses this map that shows where um, people from different incomes live, and also then you have your map of your collection. So how how it, how do they match? So it's a good exercise to have different maps there. Um, then over here we have more uh, more um, different maps in here, like the one on the left shows a map of a waste collection route. Then lastly, uh, the tab photos is it helps understand the sector better um, by putting photos of the of the different um, 
facilities that you have or, or, or different activities within the solid waste management. So one of them could be, uh, like here it shows the transfer station in Lome. Then this one is the composting platform, the informal recovery of, of recyclable waste. So all pictures that are very interesting to have to kind of show what is going on in the city. So these are more photos of the similar of other activities in Lome. And that's basically the last tab. Um, I hope that you guys are um, inspired to use the tool. I know it requires a lot of information, so it's a little overwhelming at the beginning, but once you get used to it, it you can see that it's very practical to use. The tools are, of the Waste Initiative are located at wastecccollision.org slash tool. And basically to download the, this, the tool that I just um, mentioned um, is, is here. The, here's the, the website, CCAC, uh, waste waste.ccaccollision.org, document data collection tool full version. So this is actually the full version, which I mentioned, which has all the specialized tabs. And you can download the English version here, and there's a Spanish version that uh, has to be updated, unfortunately, but um, because there were some changes made to the English version, so I have to update that. Um, so that's where you can download it, and basically that is it. I'm sorry this took so long, but it's, I can see there's a lot of information that is being asked. If you do have, if you do download that tool and have any questions, uh, please go ahead and email me. Here's my email address. Uh, there's also, as, as I showed in the, there's a manual that you can download to use the tool so that that has a little bit more information. But hopefully this webinar, um, you can watch it again. And, and if, but if you have to, any, do have any questions, please feel free to contact me. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Sandra, for that detailed presentation. Um, it's it's also good that we've recorded the webinar because it's going to be available um, online on the Knowledge Platform. Um, so the floor is open now for questions. If anybody has any, uh, please go ahead and type it in the dialog box or unmute yourselves and just ask uh, Sandra directly. Um, alternatively, she's also going to be uh, available via email. So if you have any of those um, questions later on, you can just email her freely. Um, Sandra, I see that uh, Kent Foster has written something. He would like you to show those reference links again. If you could just go back to that uh, slide, please. I'm guessing he wants this um, links for the global ah, partnership and ad base space. So there they are um, in the results space. Um, the other one um, is uh, you can actually visit the CCAC. Um, page and you'll find you go to waste initiative and go to uh, where it says knowledge platform and that will give you that will take you to the knowledge platform where you can find all the information all the tools from the from the waste initiative excellent thank you um, I see that Yeshi Wangdi is typing a question and I'll show you meanwhile I'll go ahead and show you the um, let me see if I can show you that. Here's the, um, show you the, this is the knowledge platform. So it's www.wastecollectionccaccoalition.org. And um, here you have information about the cities that belong to the, to the initiative. And then if you go to tools, then you have the tools, like I mentioned, the solid waste emissions, emission estimation tool suite, and then we have other tools. And here's the one that I talked about, the data collection tool. And then here's the rapid assessment tool in three languages. So it's available in English, French, and Spanish. Um, so if you have any issues, uh, please um, go ahead and email Can I me. Can I ask, uh, this is Moneta, can I ask you something? Yes, go ahead. Can I go ahead? Okay. Uh, very, very interesting. Thank you for your detailed presentation. I really was very interested. Uh, do, you have it, do you have it already applied? And can you tell me how long it took for the data collection? Because it seems to me that it would take 
quite some time. It depends on the city. Um, so it depends Still. on the, the, yeah, the size. So I would say, I think from the beginning, once you start collecting the information and you have to start thinking of the sources, I would say that we can easily, between trying to figure out who would have the source and find it can basically to fill out the whole thing, I would say probably like eight hours, I would say, uh, because there's, okay. there's a lot of information and you have to email and get and kind of see how, how uh, that information that you get put it into the tool. Hmm. Do you really apply? Because it took a year to me. Oh, really? You know, something well, much like, I mean, yeah, that's what uh, I do this type of analysis for life cycle assessment. Mm -hmm. of integrated system and I do it in one of the most developed region in the world I'm in the northern part of Italy and it is incredibly incredibly long uh, because usually even the best companies do not have an office dedicated to data collection which I've been trying to tell them they need but still after 10 years of me repeating it they haven't done it yet so it took me an enormous, an enormous, I, I go quite frankly even more in detail because I ask them about containers, I want to know how much plastic they are made of, blah, blah, blah. But it does take a, a lot, a lot of time. And I did something similar to this, something like 30 years ago almost for contaminated sites. Mm -hmm. And still takes an enormous amount of time because even if the data, even if, the data are available, there is not a single center collecting them. So you become the center collecting them with your tool. And so for me, unless you have already done and someone has already really done it and you can that because um, I'm not saying it shouldn't be done for that. I, 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 that. That's not the point. I'm still doing it. That's what I'm still trying to do. But it does take an enormous amount of time. Yeah, I think uh, one of the objectives of that that of the of the tool is to basically to to show the city, you know, you need it would be really good to have this information. You can start filling it out uh, as much as possible, and you can see, okay, this information is important. It would be really good for you to get it, uh, and then over time, maybe do several versions of it. Like, okay, you can you have you start with a basic the SMA, information that you have at hand and then like next year and you start finding more information wh or where you can find it who has mm -hmm. it because, like you said yeah it's really hard sometimes to know who has that information exactly. and then so you have to start asking around who has it who has done it sometimes even the, the information is not within the city maybe an international organization has it because international exactly. organization has gone in and actually done a study and then so sometimes when you start poking or probing is when you start like saying, oh, this information is here. So, you know, you can have multiple versions, but it, it does illustrate sure. the, all the data that goes in and it would be really good for projects moving, like for thinking about projects to have that information. And Absolutely. Maybe, maybe you can, and, and you can customize it. Okay, I'm really just concerned about waste collection. Maybe I'll, I'm just going to focus on that. Sure. Um, so sure. yeah, it's, it's very you know, and, it, and I like that tool because of that is not um, something that you cannot modify. Mm -hmm. You can actually add, like you said, uh, you can add uh, columns. You can add more information to it. Like I remember when I did it for, I did have done this assessment for Amman and for Rio. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes even that the, the information requested didn't fit what what I found. Sure. So I would add an extra line and say, here's what I have. You know, mm -hmm. or maybe in the notes say, okay, this is what we have now. So it doesn't fit your the question, but this is similar and, and it gives you an, an, an idea of how the waste is managed in the city. Absolutely, sure. Can I ask you a second question? Yes, go ahead. Uh, the SWEET model, uh, mm -hmm. it, it essentially calculates from all these data emissions. Yes. Okay. Uh, how does it work? How, what, um, is, what is the basis for the calculation? Basically, it takes information from each sector, um, and then it kind of gives you a baseline scenario of those sectors. So I would 
I don't want to go into that right now. Um, okay, but I, can I, write I would to recommend. Uh, we have here, like I said, you can find the information here. We'll be posting the webinar with the introduction. Uh, okay. Soon. Okay. Uh, good. So you can see that. And if you have okay. any questions about the suite tool, I'm also welcome to to, Thank to you. get those. Thank you. And then, um, if I don't know the answer, you can actually um, submit the, the questions to the suite tool here to suite appassociate.com and copy me. And basically, App Associates was the developer of, of the tool. So they are very open to um, mm -hmm. uh, providing answers to, to using the tool. So OK, thank you very much. I'll study, and then I get back OK. You're thank welcome. you very much. Any other questions? Um, Sandra, there's one from um, Yeshi. If you can go to the dialog okay. box. Yeah. So it says, will ISWA help me in analyzing the data? I really want to start compiling an available data and analyze. Um, basically, um, I, I would answer from, from, I can answer for ISWA, I can answer from, from the Waste Initiative. I can um, help you with some questions you have about the tool. I can try to see if there are any of our partners um, um, that can help you when analyzing the data. So I would recommend you send me a, an email uh, with your information, and we'll try to figure out how, how we can help you with analyzing that data. <clears throat> okay. Yes, um, I think that's it so far. Um, I don't see any other hands raised. So um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Sandra, for leading today's webinar. And uh, thank you, everyone else, for participating. Uh, we went uh, a little beyond our allocated time, but it was necessary because it was, um, you know, it's a very important tool. And this presentation is going to be available as a recording on the CCAC uh, knowledge platform. So uh, everyone's welcome to go back to it and listen to it and uh, reach out to Sandra if they have any questions. Um, so uh, till then, um, I wish you happy holidays and a lovely